and welcome to the uh, April 5th, 2022 meeting of the Penfield Conservation Board. Uh, I'm Jim Olmsted, and with us tonight we have Jeff Bartocci, Roseanne Cohen, Pat Schickler, Daniel Moore, and Paul Sugnet, and uh, Catherine, um, Catherine Dubrecq from our planning department. And I see that we have some guests who've joined us tonight, and welcome. So uh, we begin with the approval of minutes. And our minutes of March 1st, I've had a chance to look over. Does anyone have any comments on the minutes? Nope. Uh, Catherine, before I forget, I will ask you to speak on uh, the uh, future hazardous and household waste collection that we have in our minutes from that meeting. If you have any more details, uh, maybe you don't. Uh, don't but, but if you do, we uh, might have details. If you do, that that would be probably something good to okay. talk about again tonight. Okay. Oh, so, uh, hearing no objection to the minutes, we'll declare them perfect as always, Catherine. So, thank you. So, uh, under communications, Catherine, I see we're going to mention the electric vehicle show on April 9th, and I believe that's at the community center. Is that right? Yes, there, I didn't have time to pull it up. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Maybe not. There was a nice flyer that we had shared, um, but here's the website. So there's more information with the time, nine to 12 community center, um, RSVP, but hopefully the weather's really nice and there's a lot of turnout and learn more about EVs. Yeah. I. Um I originally got that information from Bob Kenauer, who himself has an electric vehicle and, uh, of course, uh, does a lot of work in the, in the solar uh, industry. So uh, that'll, be, uh, that'll be fun to go to. I hope to have a chance to do so myself. And again, the time you said uh, I should have brought my distance glasses. It says 9 to 12. Uh, yes. The yep. time again is... 9 a.m. to 12 9 to 12, 12 p.m. Okay, mm -hmm. on April 9th, and that's coming right up. And being uh, 9 to 12, uh, for those of us who want to watch the Masters, I guess we won't miss much because yeah. I don't think they do much between 9 and 12. I have no idea. You're not a golfer. I'm not. Oh, uh, golly. <laughs> okay, keep trying to get more golfers on this conservation board. Okay, and then tell us about this uh, Mayor's uh, Monarch Pledge. Yes, so that is something that we're researching. Um, it's basically you, there's a list of actions. Um, some of them are as simple as have a tree giveaway um, or have a like public communications program sharing information about pollinators and monarchs on like Facebook or something. Um, and some get more involved with changing policy, um, but it's basically a free pledge that the town would take There's interest for next year. Um, this year we didn't make it, just the timing was too short because you had to pledge by the end of April, but in order for a town board to receive it and have it on their agenda, we had to have things drafted by like a couple of weeks into March, so it was just too short. Um, but it's just another like program that the town can do some eco-friendly actions and be recognized as a monarch-friendly community. Are we talking about the monarch butterfly? Yep. Okay. So when would we need to start working on this next year to be you know put put it on our radar for January or earlier? The pledge period opens in December, so we probably try to draft um, or check with the town board again, make sure people are still interested. Um, there was interest this year, just timing was too short, but work with the town board towards the end of the year, try to draft up a resolution, probably that would be staff, and then hopefully they'd approve and we'd pledge. And, do a minimum of three actions. And so we're gonna use this here as a test run. 
So we don't have to commit to anything. It's just kind of like we're seeing if we can do it. Um, one of them is the tree giveaway. So that's if we did that every year, that would be an easy one. But that's an easy one for this year. Another one is um, having a monarch celebration or including a line item in a Earth Day or Arbor Day proclamation about pollinators, which we are doing on April 23rd. So that's the second one. And then the third one would be working with our communications director to just start sharing more information about pollinators and monarchs and what we can do to help them. Um, so that's another easy one. Okay. And then next year we either pledge to do the same three or pledge to do four or change okay. it up, do a different three. So it's, it's really up to what the town's okay. able to do and sure. I think starting with three is. So should okay. we be having begin discussion on that in November? You, you said could. the pledge period opens. You know, I'm just mm -hmm. trying to make a mental note when yeah. we should put it so it doesn't catch us off guard. Yeah. So that's just we the information was shared um I think in between our February and March meeting. And then because there was we're still trying to research and figure out mm -hmm. what the program's about and what's involved. We didn't have any information for the March meeting, but now it's where there's interest. It's just timing. Oh, sure, understandable. But it's just yeah, so, so that we um, have it on a radar. Yeah, something to think about. Funny enough time. Okay. Okay, our next item is uh, public participation. Easy for me to say. Uh, has uh, anyone asked to be heard? Yes, we do have okay. at least one guest. Okay. And would you like to come forward and find a microphone and and introduce yourself? Oops. Hi, I'm Megan Meyer, and you want my address? It's up to you. <laughs> You're a 61 Henderson resident. Drive. Yeah. Um, I will be your speaker in May, but I just wanted to introduce myself um, to all of you and just to say that I'm so excited to see what you are doing as far as um, the Arbor, um, the um, getting our town on board with the Arbor Day Tree City USA and also our tree planting. Um, and um, when I was looking at our agenda uh, for uh, tonight, um, I wasn't aware of this um, Mayor's Monarch Pledge, but I kind of went through the whole program. And this is exactly what Healthy Yards Monroe County is all about. So we would love to partner with the town. We have already done some education through our Penfield Library. We had four. Uh, actually, we had seven presentations within the last year and a half um, on um, pollinators. And this monarch pledge is not just about the monarch butterfly, but it is about the decline in our pollinators within the last 50 years and uh, saving biodiversity. So um, I'm, I'm just so um, in awe of what we are doing um, under our new supervisor. So um, I just want to commend you um, on the conservation committee that um, you know, is, is moving forward on some of these new projects and endeavors. Well, uh, for our television audience, uh, let me just say we're pleased to have you appearing as our speaker in May. And uh, your, your talk is going to be on healthy yards, isn't it? Uh, yes. And uh, so I'm sure that um, it's a wonderful time of year for you to be appearing uh, for our residents and helping us understand what we can do to uh, have a, a biodiverse and healthy yard. So uh, welcome, and we'll look forward to your talk. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else uh, who would like to speak tonight? Okay, well, again, um, welcome, folks. And uh, so um, we're going to table our discussion on uh, Tree City tonight. Uh, we still need some additional input from the town board, so we'll be coming back to have additional conversations about that, I'm sure. But uh, right now, 
uh, for tonight. We're going to table that discussion. So, um, Catherine, uh, under review of ongoing projects, would you take us through that? Yes. All of the projects are pretty much the same as in March. So a lot of the new projects, um, the new planning board applications for projects are in already pretty developed areas. There is a new one for April that will be a public hearing for next, uh, next Thursday is the April planning board public hearing. This is, um, Sorry, I can't navigate and talk. Um, but this is on the corner of Atlantic and Scribner. So there's the Heritage Christian Services. They're proposing a group home, and that would be in this. They would be subdividing this existing parcel, 2730 Atlantic. I'll zoom in a little. Um, actually, bring up the plans. And then they would be proposing a group home in this area right here, that's like sort of brush and little scraggly trees, and they would not be adding anything to Atlantic. They would just have a couple entrances off of Scribner. Okay, uh, so those entrances off Scribner will be quite close to uh, Bay Trail South. Am I correct? I think. Um, yeah, it's like yeah. it's right there. Yeah, so um, I am <laughs> assuming someone is taking a hard look at transportation and uh, the fact that we've got a lot of school traffic there. Yes, yeah, this is an item that the project review committee is talking about. So the PRC group chats about this. Um, and other new projects that come in. So they're, yeah, they're looking more at transportation, engineering side of it. Is this, uh, this is coming before the planning board? Yes, this is a new application and the first time it'll be heard is next Thursday. So it's for the April public hearing. So they won't be moving forward on anything next Thursday if there's interest in a conservation board report. Um, there's well, I'm just wondering about things like screening. You know, we're, we're going to be right tight to Bay Trail South. Any thoughts by the conservation board members here? Are they building a new building on that corner? Yes. And nothing's, what's gonna happen to the building that's there? It'll still be there. Oh. They're gonna split the land, the parcel, like sort of, well, not quite in half. I've um, forgotten, is that just a private residence that's on that parcel? It's that ab abandoned place that had all the copper stolen out of it. Really? Same building? Mm -hmm. uh, there, somebody was gonna do something with it, but then because it got destroyed by the copper being taken out of it, if, it, if we're talking about the same place that I'm thinking about. That sounds familiar. Yeah. But the, the whole property is currently owned by Heritage Christian Services, so it would just be them subdividing and potentially building okay. if they get approval. As far as screening goes, it looks like the property is backing up more to the um, parking lot areas, so I'm not sure um, what screen, you know, how much screening. Catherine, are you able to move it? Oh, down yeah. a little so we can see where exactly where the school is in relation. Do you want it down more? Oh, okay, there's well, okay, there's the building. All right. And I can zoom out. Here's okay. Well, that gives view. us an idea. Hmm. So it would be here. So I mean, I'm not sure personally what what screening would be yeah. needed because of that large parking lot expanse. But the traffic would be an issue, I think, not just school buses, but lately if I've been in a vicinity of any schools, there's all sorts of parents lined up to pick up, and that's more more issues to me anyways than the, the uh, school buses, so. 
I can't imagine a group home would have a lot of traffic. Yeah, especially early in the morning. I don't yeah. think so. Okay. Well, is it the opinion of our conservation board members that this doesn't need our review, or where are we on this? I don't think so. I, I don't think it looked like if, from what I could see of this uh, overhead, it uh, looks to be, um, as, as Catherine said, scrub and small, small trees, if any. Well, well Jim, uh, this is Paul. Yeah. Yeah, I, based on what our, what we serve, <laughs> right. I, this doesn't look like a project we would have to take a look at, in my opinion. Yeah, say, say that again, Paul. Yeah, I don't think this is a project that we necessarily have to look at. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm inclined to agree, and if everyone's in agreement, I guess we'll we'll say, yeah, this is certainly a known entity. Uh, Heritage Christian is a known entity, and they they do a good job. I, I'm still I'm still a little concerned about the proximity to the school, but uh, I think that's not not in our purview to decide. So it's going before the planning board. I'm sure they'll take a hard look at that. So I guess uh, this not being exactly a, a large area of open space that's now being developed, um, we'll take a pass on this one. Sure. And then okay. the other, Any, anything else, Catherine? The other April public hearing projects are ones you've seen. So the Taco Bell project, um, before that was a sketch plan. Now they're, they have their formal planning board application, but that's right smack in the middle of Empire Creek and Bay, so there's mm -hmm. like no trees there. And then that Verizon Tower in Four Corners by the uh, fire district and Charles Finney School. Um, that one, same thing, it was a sketch plan before and now it's a formal planning board application, but it's such a small area of the parking lot that it's really not conservation board report material. <laughs> As I recall for the Taco Bell, even though it was not conservation board, you know, right material, um, we had mentioned concerns about um, traffic onto uh, Creek Street from yes. there, Creek Street entrances because of uh, Chipotle. Um, Chipotle being there and um, seeing some of the other fast food restaurants along Empire, I could see that they're quite busy with long wraparound line into their uh, drive-through. Yes. At uh, dinner time, when Creek Street traffic would also be high. Yes. So I don't know be if a... there was any more news on um, looking into that. No real news, but I'm sure I'd be surprised if it wasn't a conversation okay. next Thursday. I'm sure the planning board would like more information. Um, just it's a busy area and like you said with queuing and so hopefully I'll have more information. Okay, on thanks. Just wanted you to meeting. keep your ears open on that particular point. Yes. But okay. Um, you've got a held uh, items here and do we, do we have any held items? I know we've got some old business that will be talking about, but uh, why don't we move on then to old business and the uh, tree planting and giveaway for April 23rd. And um, I'm going to let you, uh, you and Jeff, uh, take the lead on this, and maybe you can share with us to begin with, um, Catherine, the, the poster sure. that you've put together, and um, then you and Jeff can talk us through how you see this uh, event on April 23rd, how you see that going. And I'm gonna ask that our television viewing audience uh, really tune in here because we'd love to see you on April 23rd. And um, I don't know if, uh, if Jeff and Daniel have any information to share with us on scout participation as well. Do we have anything to share there? 
Uh, so yes, I reached out to the, the Girl Scouts uh, last week and I just got an email today from the generic uh, Western uh, New York uh, Girl Scouts or, uh, like branch and uh, they just have to run it by their uh, marketing and communication department and they'll be putting it on their website and social media. So we may have some Girl Scouts with yes. us? Perhaps, yes. Okay. Um, anything from you, Catherine, or you, Jeff, on Scouts? I'm still waiting to hear back on my brother's uh, former troop. So there's interest. They're just trying to gauge how much. Um, they said they'd let me know tomorrow. For those of you who are wondering why we might like Scouts, they have young legs. <laughs> <laughs> and I have very old legs, so I am not going to do a lot of hiking at this event. Um, now, that's me. <laughs> most, of, most of my associates on this board have much younger legs than I do. So, uh, But I'll let you uh, start with the poster, uh, Catherine, and then you and, you and Jeff can kind of frick and frack your way through the discussion on April 23rd. Sure, so this poster Brian from PCTV created. I did not create it, so it's beautiful. Um, this has been shared with the rec department, so they've printed out some flyers and are sharing it in rec and around the library. We have flyers uh, at most of the counters in town hall, so like at the clerks, at um, building department, planning, and then we, last week, last Friday, picked up 10 yard signs with this information. So when you come in, maybe you saw it coming in this evening, there's one at the Atlantic entrance to Town Hall. There's one outside of DPW. There's one at Four Corners in that little small park. Um, Schaefel Burger, I think is the name. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. And then there's a couple more, like at the rec center and um, Veterans Memorial Park. There's a couple around there. So we're trying to promote it outside as well as inside and share it on social media. And we've gathered some interest. We've had some questions from residents sent to the parks department. So there's, um, she was actually a, a involved with the Girl Scouts too. So hopefully we have some scouts joining and we will have a couple tables. So color Penfield Green and Healthy Yards Monroe County will have some information at a couple tables. And then the Rochester Museum and Science Center, they're interested in coming and having their, I can't remember what the name of it is, but it's a 3D model of a watershed. And they'll have some water quality information to share and maybe some H2O hero swag to give to kids and um so that's that'll be cool i hope it's nice out so, so for all... our audience considering coming to this april 23rd event uh, rothfuss park on five mile line road has pretty ample parking mm -hmm. i i'm not sure how many parking spots we have but my guess would be it's in the neighborhood of 200 am i close yeah okay so uh you know, don't hesitate, folks, to come. And when we talk about giveaway of trees, I want to be sure everybody understands that we're talking about seedlings. And we only have two different kinds of seedlings. We have the eastern white pine, mm -hmm. and we have red maple. And uh, Jeff is going to speak now, I think, to our desire to put in a grove of red maples. Sure. So we will be committing a, a fair number of those seedlings to that. And uh, it's all yours, Jeff. And I, I made sure that the poster said seedling, so yeah. just yeah. to avoid <laughs> confusion. Yeah. No, one, no one should show up with a truck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> expecting. We'll have four big ones to plant. We're, yeah. we're going to plant um, four big ones in like this general area. So two on each side, and then the um, grove. And if folks want to come out and plant one, that'll be kind of like in this area. 
And okay. we've got Tim and Eric with us tonight. So um, I'm going to invite you guys to, to get into this conversation as well. And uh, you're obviously going to be working with Jeff as to putting in this uh, a grove of maples. So uh, important that we're all <laughs> that we're all working together on that. Take it away, Jeff. Okay, so, <clears throat> so uh, it it um, what is the status with the Boy Scouts that you are going to be looking into? Uh, so uh, I had email sent, uh, and also Catherine sent an email to. Troop 312 as well, okay. and uh, there's camping trip the same weekend. Oh, okay. But there might be scouts that don't want to go on the camping trip to show up, but it's all up in the air right now with them. Okay. Um, okay, so um, I guess we're going to go back to uh, the Grove. So one thing I want to say to the folks that are watching, um, I'm kind of excited about this. I'm actually going to be uh, having my granddaughter come out and uh, we're gonna plant a tree together. Uh, what I was envisioning with this is um, people that come out to get uh, trees or seedlings, you come in and you pick one up and then you take a kid, you take your spouse, you take your fiance and you go back and I believe the parks department's gonna help us out by having stakes and all the stuff that we need to, tra to plant the trees back there and uh, We'll go back, we'll plant a seedling, and we're also going to uh, keep a record, um, like in the case of my granddaughter, in 20 years, she can go and see the tree that she pr she planted with her grandfather. Um, the, the, the tree is a native tree to Penfield. The tree is actually the Penfield tree. That's why I chose the red the red maple um, to, to, to to be the tree in this grove. And I envision every year that we do this, as much room as we get from the parks department for this grove. Um, every year, I'd like to have other people uh, leave their mark on it. And it'll be a testament to this, this, this conservation board and um, all the other folks that wanna be involved. I think it's gonna be a really cool thing, a really fun, you know, take a few minutes to do something with the family. Um, the idea is we're gonna, I will help people if we don't have enough Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts or whatever, but um, I'll go out with folks and help them plant a tree. We can, they'll even be able to take the opportunity to learn how to plant a tree so when they take theirs home, uh, they'll plant it so it has the maximum uh, opportunity to survive. Yep, we'll have Bruce Zaretsky, the our town landscape consultant will be joining us in the morning to do a quick how to plant demo, um, just like how to properly plant a tree. And uh, Marie will say a few words in the morning. And then, yeah, I'm planning to be around all morning. So if there's low turnout, I'm happy to stay and plant the leftovers. And hopefully a lot of people come, but who knows? And again, for our audience, um, we recognize not everyone's going to want to do the planting at Rothfuss Park, so there will be, we think, enough seedlings that, uh, depending on the turnout here, uh, people will be able to take a seedling home. And certainly we have a lot of the, uh, the eastern white pine, which is a beautiful tree. Uh, it's... Uh, I... Last, That's also uh, native to here, correct? Oh, absolutely. And uh, I, uh, I know I, I showed you at our last meeting that uh, the Smithsonian had an article on the old trees in their January-February issue. And there's a, there's a fellow who's really made it a career to find the oldest trees in New England, particularly. And... Um, He's found some just remarkably old trees, several hundreds of years old, three, three and four hundred years old, uh, that are extremely tall. Um, a lot of experts thought he'd never find trees that old because in the early days of settlement, uh, there was a lot of harvesting of trees. And, um, but he found some very old ones in areas that were not easily cleared 
by the early settlers. And I, I still wonder if we might have some really old ones uh, tucked away in some uh, relatively inaccessible parts of Penfield. So if those of you in our audience want to volunteer to let us know about uh, trees that you think might be uh, uh, especially old and especially large, um, we'd love to know about them. Uh, I think uh, you can take great pride in having some of these uh, in our community. So um, again, uh, 10.30 is our start time, 12.30 is our end time. It's at Rothfuss Park on Five Mile Line Road. Uh, obviously, if you come at 10.30, I think you'll probably get to hear what Bruce has to say. Mm -hmm. uh, if you come later, uh, hopefully we'll have some young-legged people who can uh, uh, take you out with Jeff's assistance to find the appropriate spot if you want to participate in the planting of, of the grove. But again, uh, don't hesitate to, um, particularly with the eastern white pine, to take uh, one or two of those seedlings home and plant them in your own yard. Yes. And we'll have, um, we're gonna have some little bags with uh, uh, kind of a, uh, a mulch or uh, what, what am I, what's the word what I'm was looking that for? There was that growing mix that yeah. we yeah. used to put on, dip it in of something. I remember dipping the seedlings because yeah, they're, they're bare root and we would dip in. We had a, we had a liquid and we had um, some kind of mulch of that we would use, uh, soil moist or mulch. mulch. And we'd put the seedling in a bag and people would have a way to get it home without drying out the root. So. Uh, have we made plans for that? Uh, uh, not yet, okay, but tomorrow then. I will check with the county to see how they will be when we pick them up. So maybe they'll come with that baggy uh, from we the used county to, already. We used to go or? out, and when we've done this in the past, we used to go out and buy a bunch of bags, just the clear little plastic bags. And uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not mulch. It's... Uh, peat moss. We used to get a bag of peat moss and then there was um, there was a fertilizer liquid. And you guys from Parks, can you help me out here? Uh, what what would be a good way to uh, send people home with um, with some bagged uh, seedlings? So Tim? So Tim? Tim Asterton. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Hi, Tim. sorry for not getting back to you before I had a six, uh, six, six month old. Oh, okay. So, I apologize for not getting back. No worries. Um, a no, uh, an easy way that we could do it is if, um, I mean, if you pick it up right away, go home and plant it the same day, I don't see a problem with um, leaving it bare, bare root like that. Okay. Um, it all depends on what we're going to get, how they're going to arrive at, our, at the location at Rafa's Park. Yeah, we used to, uh, <coughs> when we'd pick them up, we used to have to separate them. Mm -hmm. They all kind of matted together. Yeah. And then we'd, if we were handing out one or two seedlings, we'd, we'd put that in the plastic bag mm -hmm. with a little moist yep. uh, mulch and a yep. little- it could, be, it could be anything as easy as like a wet paper towel just to keep it, keep it well enough through um, the transportation home to, okay. for the residents. So I wonder, uh, would that be something that you could manage to have on hand at Rockford Park? That's something Park? that we could talk about later on to see what kind of, uh, um, it all, yeah, it all depends on how they arrive, okay. I'd imagine. I think they'll be kind of all bunched, bunched together. together. Yeah, and I think we have to kind of carefully so, yeah, we, pick we've them We've done apart. this for a few, we had yeah. done this okay. several years and mm -hmm. that's how okay. they came. Yeah. And as I said, I don't know what the liquid mixture was, but it was some something, not just moisture, but it was something, it was something to, else too. to help them grow. A uh, gel of some yeah. yes. yeah. Honestly, yeah. I can't remember the last time we did bare root with the town was with when we were originally building Rafa's Park back in, you know, 2006, seven and eight, uh, we planted a thousand bare root trees around the outside of the walking path and it escapes my memory on what the um, liquid was that yeah. was Same in the bag. Um, yeah. I think Bert's yeah. the person that would know the answer to all those questions. Yes. Bert, 
Yeah, Bert, it seems like he, Bert is our resident expert on yeah. this. And also, um, I have a question because we have typically had a leaflet or sheet of paper on the tree that we were distributing, and Bert said he likely still had um, electronic copies of that anyways. I didn't know if that had been arranged for yet. Jeff, I don't know if you've been in touch with Bert or No, I haven't about talked to Bert. Because I know he said he's likely still had it and was going to look for it. Yeah, I haven't followed up with him yet on that, but I'll do that tomorrow. And okay. then at the very least, I have a couple documents that I saved just from like the Arbor Day website and the county. And so we could just okay. print a sheet and fold it up and include that. Inclu that we, sheet we, also told him how to... Um, how Planted to plan it, how far down to go, and yeah, it was a little bit of instruction. How often to with water it and stuff like that, I believe. Yeah, I can make sure. Okay. Check with Bert and then make yeah, sure. Yeah, check with Bert first. No need to cre recreate the wheel if he's yeah, got if he has it already. already. And then just share what, if he doesn't, then I can share what I've uh, acquired and then print them. Um, Add to if needed. Yeah. Um, you mentioned swag for kids that that was um, I think it was um, the Rochester Museum and Science Center perhaps coming we, we had talked yes. about were there any pins left the red maple pins that the town had when they did our celebration with that and whether or not mm -hmm. I, I don't know how many there were if there's any and if they're willing to distribute those I followed up with uh, the supervisor's office and then facilities and there were none. Okay. Okay. So that's it was a great idea. Well, if but they were hanging around. Yeah, that's a okay. perfect way to distribute them. But yeah. Okay. There weren't any. When did you uh, plan on putting the stakes in the ground and doing that? Because I was. So for to save to save on stakes and uh, flags and everything, we were just gonna. Basically, in the next week or two, probably week and a half, we were going to go around and just make an outline of that area that we were going to have that forest grove in. So um, probably middle of next week, I'm hoping to add that to our schedule. Okay. We would put, just pound a couple stakes in the ground and then tie string off so uh, okay. to make an area for people to plant. How, how many do you plan on doing? Because what we, what we wanted to do was... Uh, when people go back and plant them, I'd like to be able to put their put their names so they can identify mm -hmm. so they can identify with the tree yeah, that I they built. I would imagine it would be like kind of a first come first serve. So if you're there early, you would pick whatever spot you'd want. Um, I would hope that we would keep the plantings at least probably eight feet away from each other. Okay, that kind of thing. So and if we have to expand the area, if there's more people coming and planting, we would. Uh, expand the area to the um, south east okay well we have uh, I, don't know, I guess we're gonna need a little uh, a map at least where we can put the, the, the num number yeah and yeah. orient it so we can sure. do something with that yeah that's easy okay and Tim I did you personally plan to be there Yes. On the 23rd? Yep, myself and probably another one or two of my park, our parks employees will be okay. there. We will help with the bigger trees. So between you guys and, and Jeff, you know, you'll you'll know where you want people to put these. Mm -hmm. And how, what, what do you think the appropriate number is for your grove? Uh, you're thinking 20 or 30 trees or something like that? You know what, I would have to, how much, I would have to ask him, yeah, we'd Tim, have to, because I don't know what's, how big these are going to get. Yeah, I don't know. Big. Yeah, they'll <laughs> get pretty big over time, and obviously yeah. there's going to be a success rate of them. Uh, but we'll have a better idea of that when we go and map out the actual area okay. that we're doing that we can hold. How many red babels were we getting again? 50. Okay. So we'd likely not, not going to look at a grove of 50 are we i mean no no probably it's... more like 20 maybe or 20 25. Okay. okay yep i think that's something that we can okay. manage in that area so again just so folks understand when they arrive to take seedlings home uh frankly we'll prefer that you take a an eastern white pine home yeah uh, because we we do want to get this grove of maples yep. established at rothfuss park 
Jeff, what time are you suggesting conservation board members arrive prior to the event? What help will you need? Who would you need? I could be here. So we're gonna do a lot of setup beforehand with our parks department. Uh, the couple days before, we're gonna go pick up the big four trees that we're um, purchasing from a nursery through the grant that we got. We're gonna pre-dig the holes so it's easier. There's less machinery around when there's hopefully a lot of people gonna be there. Um, and we'll be there to help assist that. Um, so we'd probably get there maybe half an hour before start time. All right, and how long do you? Then. So we're gonna have to. I'll be there like nine. Okay, so we're gonna have to Just separate those. Excited. You're thinking, and we're gonna have to bag them. So we'll probably, I would imagine, we should be there. What time? Do you know what time the tree, the seedlings will be there? I guess that's a question. They'll be picked up either the Thursday or Friday before. And those are the only days we can pick will them. Will you up. bring them to? Who's gonna bring them to the park? Yeah, I can. We can figure yeah, we'll, it out. We'll coordinate that. Okay. Well, so what I'm thinking is, is when you guys get there, we'll get there because we okay. have to separate and we okay. may, if we wind up putting them in bags, we want to be there to help you. We don't want you guys to have to do everything is what I'm thinking. Now, will we be having, a, will we have a table set up? I'm, I'm just asking, I'm not yeah. sure I'm thinking we, so. we usually yeah. want to put the flyers out yeah. and such and okay. or the leaflets to go with the trees and. So how big of tables are we gonna have? And I'm thinking we're gonna wanna have um, a, a separate, a, another table for people going out to, to plant them. Yeah, we'll need a workspace. Yeah, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna need a workspace, probably. Yeah. Are we gonna have any access to any water anywhere? Um, <clears throat> as far as I know, I think, I don't know, <laughs> I, the bathroom should be open by then. Whoa. So there should be a uh, water Eric access. Eric is nodding. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's not going to be an issue. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So well, maybe if you're going to show up at nine, I'll, I'll show up at nine. And then yeah, it doesn't. I'm between just between nine and nine thirty, I guess. For our conservation board members. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so we'll uh, we'll ask our our viewing audience to uh, probably not show up a whole lot before <laughs> ten thirty. They. The event is a 10.30 to 12.30 event, and uh, trust that we'll be ready for you. <laughs> As I recall, did we each bring little trowel? Those of us that were coming would oh. you know, come with a tr little trowel in hand. Good, good point, and, and for, for those who want to uh, <laughs> maybe go out and uh, work with their kids at planting trees in a grove, uh, probably be helpful if you do have a small uh, hand spade uh, but probably be helpful to bring that. We'll have yeah. a few, I guess. Yep. In the parks department, we'll provide a couple. Sho yeah. We'll bring shovels, maybe about um, eight to ten shovels, just in case people forget them at home, and Sweet. so okay. we can help out. What time are you actually planting? You said you were digging the holes um, prior, but what time will you actually plant the four large trees? So we were planning to do it during the event. So we okay. would pre-dig the holes on either that Thursday or Friday beforehand. Mm -hmm. Whenever we pick up the trees, we'll drop them next to the hole, and then mm -hmm. hopefully we'll be there to during after 1030 at some point okay. to, so they can see us put it in if they want to help. Nice, at least after Bruce's talk. Correct. Okay. Yep. And there's no truth to the rumor that you may find Jimmy Hoffa? No, that would be at um, the Shadow Pines property. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, quick response. <laughs> Still looking for him. Well, yep. thank you. Thank you for everybody who's contributing to this. Uh, Paul, you had a point, I guess. Oh, I was just curious if we're doing anything with the post. With... The post, oh, the paper. Oh, the, oh, the newspaper. Adver advertising. Well, I don't know, Catherine, do we have plans to it's, put anything in the paper? Or have them present for? Um, we haven't shared out like an official media release just because it's been so far in advance that like if we sent it out last month or even now, there's still events happening in town before this. Okay. So I've wor been working with Chris Tanay, who's our communications director, and so we're, we have a plan to, well, I'm not sharing it, but we're working together so he'll share something out with like DNC and like news. I don't know who will be there, but the, the invite will be out if they'd like to come. 
so that'll probably be uh, after the electric vehicle show, just because that's coming up sure. sooner. And then we have a bunch of social media posts and on the website, so hopefully people will see it that way too. Well, we thank Tim for being with us tonight thank from you. the Parks Department and you, uh, Eric thank from uh, DPW. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, does anybody have any more comments about what we should be doing on this <laughs> tree planting event? on April 23rd. Again, reminder everybody, I know I've said it two, three times, 10.30 is the start time, 12.30 is the ending time, and we'll be at Rothfuss Park on Five Mile Line Road. Yes, and I also forgot to mention, um, I shared the information with the Penfield Central School District and the superintendent shared the information with the school district's like sustainability committee and then also with the environmental club, the um, advisor and then also the students, but that is during their uh, spring break. So I'm not sure how many uh, school personnel would join students and faculty, but they are aware of it, so. Bring your kids. Yeah. And then I also shared it with the Rotary Club and the Kiwanis group and the Penfield Parrington Rotary. They're also planning to clean Channing Philbrook Park the same morning, um, but they offered to share the information in case folks don't wanna wade through Rondequoy Creek then they could come um, and I'll have some like garbage bags and so maybe scouts can come clean up the park or the options there for them too. Did you tell Chan Philbrick that he should be there cleaning it up? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> the Rotary Club can tell him. <laughs> maybe he's a viewer tonight. Um, well, thank you everybody on that. Um, Jeff, do you have any last comment on that uh, event? No, I think it's gonna be fun. I, I'd like to see a lot of kids. I'd like to see some grandpas with their, with their grandchildren planting some trees with us. You're getting married, my daughter's also coming with her fiance. Mm -hmm. So um, it's gonna be kind of cool. Yes, I'm really hoping the weather will be at least manageable. <laughs> I. I know that there may be some people who are still a little concerned about COVID, so uh, we'll all do our best to maintain the social distance, which is mm -hmm. sometimes difficult in a oh, that reminds me event we, like this. We will also have COVID test kits to give away as oh. well. The town has some, um, the, the supervisor's office has offered to bring a couple cases, so if you need that, you can come out and, and grab some and take a tree home or plant one. You know, I am so, so fascinated by the fact that COVID came to us from China and the test kits come from China. Uh, <laughs> it's just, when I saw that, that that's, that's what the government sent me was test kits from China, I thought, all right, I'll, I'll uh, I'll keep them. I'm not sure what I'll do with them. I noticed the expiration date was only about three months out, so yeah, that's probably why they wanted to get them sent out to all of us. All right, do we have any new business other than what we just talked about? Where'd my agenda go? The only other item was just a reminder that our May guest speaker is Megan Meyer. Absolutely. She's joining us on May 5th, um, the first Tuesday May, in May. May 3rd, right? May that 3rd? sounds right. The first Tuesday in May, whatever that may be, yeah. um, to share information with us about Healthy Yards, Monroe County. So and, we'll um, be sharing Megan, information. Since you're here, would you prefer to go first at, at that time and then you know what you, you know what the schedule is going to be. Would you would you like to be our first uh, item on the agenda? That's fine. Okay, that might make sense because you may or may not want to stay for the whole meeting, and so we'll uh, we'll put you first. 
We're looking forward to it. Does that uh, wrap it up for us, Catherine? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, just to follow up on the question of the household hazardous waste. Oh, yes. Thank you. The one in Penfield is September 17th. So okay. That's a ways off. September 17th for start, hazardous waste. Start planning for that. And there is m more information on if there's, if you can't wait that long and need to go drop stuff off at a different community, it's all on the county's website. So... Monroe County would have more information. And do we know what time of day on the 17th? In the morning. They're, uh, they're by appointment, uh, so you've got to go on the county's website. To gotcha. Your time slot. Okay. And that right. was appointment and, uh, only. Is, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Or I second it. Second. All right, and uh, I guess we are going to declare ourselves adjourned, and thanks for joining us tonight, folks. <laughs>